Okay, we've got another interesting limit integral problem from MIT 2023. This was quarterfinals round four, number two. We have the limit as epsilon, or I think that's epsilon, goes to zero plus e to the fourth integral from zero to pi over two minus epsilon tan to the fifth x dx. Okay, I actually did this two ways on paper, but the first way was pretty tedious. The thing I always try on these is L'Hopital's rule but I don't really think it's advisable here because I believe, I think what I did was I had to differentiate four or five times. So it was a mess, I don't really like that method, so we'll do something different. What I'm gonna do is just deal with the integral first, just the normal way. And actually when I do it, I think I'll just drop the bounds and what we can do is derive the power reduction for tangent. For this part, I find that whenever the power is greater than like, I don't know, three or four, it's better to just do the power reduction on it. If you already know this part, you can just kind of fast forward the video to like 347, and then we'll be done with this and you could just use the formula, but I'm gonna do it out. So we'll generalize it as some integral with a integer power n, and we'll call this integral i sub n. And then all I wanna do is split it up and break out a tan squared, I'm trying to do a u substitution on it. So if we break out like tan squared over here, we'll have tan squared dx, tan to the n minus 2 of x. But now tan squared of, oh, well, I lost the x there. Put the x back. So for tan squared of x, we can use the identity on this and write this as secant squared x minus 1. But then breaking it up, I can distribute this term in and create two integrals with it. So what's going to happen for the first one this is the one that's perfectly set up for a u substitution because the derivative of tangent is going to be secant squared x. Then we've got a minus just distributed to this, so it's just going to be minus this integral. But you know what? Let's not even write it because this is just going to be the same as this with the power reduced by 2. So this thing right here is just going to be i sub n minus 2. Then next we can focus on this integral right here with a u sub. Just again, what I said before, u equals tan x, so then du is secant squared x dx, which we have right here. So I think let's actually just do it on the fly. I wanna get back to the limit. <laughs> I'm kind of impatient. So if this is gonna become u n minus two du, then it's just gonna be power rule. So let's see what we have. When we integrate it, we're gonna get u, adding one to the exponent, u n minus one over n minus one minus this i n minus two. But then we can just back substitute on it real quick. The u is tangent. So what we have for our formula of i sub n is gonna be just tangent n minus one of x over n minus one minus, get some space. And then over here, we've got our i n minus two. So basically it's a real easy formula. We reduce the power by one, same value in the exponent, and then we've got another integral reducing the power by two. Repeat, 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 repeat. So let's get a little space and we can use this on our problem. So on the integral here, this is gonna be like i sub five. So reducing five by one, the first part we're gonna have is it's gonna become tan four x over four, just reducing by one, and then minus, this is gonna become i sub 3 if this is i sub 5 reducing by 2. But then we just repeat the same thing for i sub 3 using this formula. It's going to be tan squared of x over 2 minus i sub 1. So let me just throw that back in here. This is going to be tan squared x over 2 plus i sub 1. But i sub 1, let's just do it up as the last term is always a little weird. i sub 1 is just, we're just talking about the integral of the exponent is one, it's just tan to x. So this integral, we know this is a common integral, this is gonna be the same thing as natural log secant of x. But I think it's just gonna be more convenient for me to write it a little differently this time. Instead of writing it as secant, I'll flip it and write it as minus natural log cosine x. I'm dropping the absolute value because all of our x values are positive. So drop it, and then we just need to evaluate from zero to pi over two minus. What I, what I keep wanting to do is I want to draw it like this. I think there's a difference. I think that's like for, it exists. I, I keep wanting to draw it like that, but I think there is, well, it doesn't matter. It's just a variable, but I think technically we want it to look like this. 
So from here, let's just evaluate this thing before we get back. We have a limit to do at the end, but we're still just working on this integral. So first, looking at zero, tan at zero, zero. So this goes away. Cosine at zero is one, but natural log of one, zero. So everything's zero at zero. Don't worry about that. Next, when we evaluate this, this is pretty nice because we actually have complementary angle formula. What that does, we won't worry about sine because we don't have sine, but it would be anything like this, cosine pi over two minus x or epsilon, whatever you have. This is cosine of x. Actually, we should probably do it for sine because it's just the same thing. Oh, I messed it up, wait, so the sine, the complementary angle, for, the complementary angle formula for sine gives cosine x, the complementary angle formula for cosine x is sine x, but tangent's just made up, of course, of sine and cosine, so it just flips the sines to the cosines and cosines to sines. So for tangent of this thing, we just get cotangent. So just plugging that in, we're just gonna flip everything. And now all we need to do is we'll take this, plug it in for our whole integral right here. But when I do it, let's take this epsilon to the fourth and just distribute it into every term and evaluate that limit. But now from here, this is actually not that easy to evaluate because each term is gonna be indeterminate. I think cotangent is, cotangent's gonna be going off to infinity for each of these, but then the epsilon's going to zero. So it's not quite clear it's gonna happen. Um, I think that's gonna be an indeterminate form as well because yeah, sine at zero, zero, so we get zero in the natural log there. So they're all a problem. So every term, so every single term's a problem. What I wanna do here is, let's take cotangent and split it up. Again, cotangent's cosine over sine. So let's separate the cosines with the sines and kind of bring the sine out front and look at it that way. And now with our cotangent, I'll split up. Notice I put the sine with the epsilon this way because I wanna use this definition right here. When we have the limit going to zero, when we have the limit going to zero on sine x over x or flip it, either way, it's gonna be one. So I should probably put parentheses and have the whole thing to the fourth, but this is gonna be like one to the fourth. So this piece goes away and this piece goes away. Then maybe we can deal with the easy one first. Now we can actually just evaluate like cosine at zero, that's gonna be like one. So this piece right here is gonna be like one half, but we're multiplying by zero. What it means is this middle term is just going off to zero. So we don't have to worry about that piece. This one's kind of the same thing, but we're not multiplying anything in front because we got rid of all this. So you evaluate this at zero, you get just a one to the fourth or one. So this piece is gonna be one fourth. Zero over here. This one over here, it's a pretty familiar situation. It's a lot like, let's just, it's a lot like when we're doing an integral and we end up with something like x ln x, and let's say we have to evaluate it at zero. Well, it goes to zero. Here it's not quite as clear. So maybe we should be a little more careful just because here we've got x and x, the same thing. Here we've got epsilon and sine epsilon. So technically they can be growing at different rates. So it's not, we don't know for sure that it's zero, but all I need to do to make it work, knowing what we just had there, if I just kind of create, I can kind of just create like a one term doing like sine E over E. I guess you could do sine to the fourth as well, but it doesn't really matter. All we really need is one. This, this is gonna cancel off with one of these E's and create a one. And now we have exactly that situation like we had right here, where this thing's gonna be going off to zero. So however you do it, this piece is going to zero. So all we're left with is this piece right here. And so for my final solution on it, we just get one fourth and that's it. Okay, there you go. Interesting problem from MIT 2023. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.